ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. We here at Angry Me Production want to thank our sponsor, Mobile Notary Mindy. She's certified with the National Notary Association. She's also bonded and E&O insured. She offers a wide range of services, including wills, powers of attorney, medical documents, healthcare proxies, living wills, certification of trust, assignment of personal property, HIPAA waivers, advanced healthcare directives, and 99 verification. You can find her on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Mobile Notary Mindy. You can also visit her webpage at TexasMobileNotaryMindy.com. That's TX MobileNotaryMindy.com. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Welcome, Nerd Sports 133. Today, we're going to go over a weird sport that I found. And I don't know if I did this before. I try not to like copy myself all the time. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Normally, wait before you do that. Normally, there's like a five minute, like a. Yep. Okay. All right. I... I, are you done? Are you, are you good now? You good now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. For, for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you you do buttons and everything and shh, I gotta hold on, I gotta there we go. No, I man, go go for it, go for it, go for it. No, I was uh, getting something else done. Uh we are gonna talk about unicycle hockey. I saw this and I was like, I don't know if I've done this before. Just when you thought hockey couldn't get any more exciting someone goes and invents unicycle hockey that's right unicycle hockey is a thing and I, is exactly what it sounds like hockey well, played on unicycles well yeah each player mounts onto their unicycle during game action in order to play the ball i'll say this their cores must be like big because have you ever rode on a unicycle ridden on a unicycle no have I made the attempt to ride a unicycle? Yeah. My uncle used to have a unicycle. He would ride on his unicycle all the time, trip, picking up chicks. That's one thing I can remember when I was younger. Yeah. So. Let's see here. So, what do we got, got today? And well, we're going to do the what happened last week since we didn't get to talk about it uh for baseball we're gonna do that last because chris yeah we're, 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 we're gonna do that last um yeah um oh there uh oh there is there's we'll do oh, okay yeah uh You're there right. is big news I, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry okay i'm sorry I'm sorry. So before we get started to anything else, we are going to talk about what David didn't want to talk oh about. Oh, my God. We, we, 
We are going to talk about how the Army Black Knights traveled to the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs and handed the Air Force their first loss of the year and their first loss in 13 games going back to last season. They hung 17 points on the uh, on the Falcons in the first quarter, six additional points in the second quarter for a tune of 23 points, and all the Air Force could muster was a field goal. So yes, while it is an eight and one Air Force team and it is a three and six Army team, the Commanders and Chief Trophy is now up for grabs. So I'm just kind of, you know, putting that out there. <laughs> Whoever David Dickerman is, is uh, he's he's part of the he's part of the group, and I'm so glad that he popped that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was so upset waking up to that. I woke up that Saturday morning. I was like, oh, I want to see how the game, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was so pissed off. <laughs> I see. I, I at, right. No, no. I tried, is, I tried to find the game on TV, and it wasn't not on TV. So I was like, I was like, okay, all right. And I and, and so I was looking through my text messages and everything like that, and then I, I realized something. I was like, I've not heard from David today. Yeah, I was passed out. Besides, Besides if Air Force was winning, or had they won? You would have woken up, and that would have been the first thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was technically you would, you would have texted. You would have texted Chris and I, and we, <laughs> dude. It, it to say that it would have been brutal is kind of putting. I don't know. No, I wouldn't necessarily say. A, it, it wouldn't be underselling it. It would be. <laughs> I mean, you you would be rubbing it in like seriously. I, I it's not like I did that last year or anything like that. Mm -mm. I also I mean, remember I last year really that you tried to get me to wear a dress, and I wasn't going to do it because I didn't enter into that bet with you because you know, yeah. I have the warmest of fuzzies about the whole game. Yeah, so we got to wait I until we're understood. <laughs> See, you know, what the Air Force Academy does, apparently, the week of the Air Army Air Force game, if Army is in town, is they spend all week buzzing Fort Carson. Like they do oh, flyovers. Oh. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, that's just, just what I've heard, right? And so I'm like, okay. Air Force is coming into this. They're all cocky. And they're like, all right, you know. You got the sky janitors and force, and everybody's like, oh, just about it, you know. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you that a majority of a majority of the speeches and motivation and ass chewings that the Black Knights probably got this week were handed to them by infantrymen. <laughs> I can see that. You know, I mean, wow. Uh, you know, you, you would have had people like, you know, Lieutenant Colonel Ragsdale <laughs> jumping in and just, mm. you know, it's not called a knife hand anymore. It's called a shark hand. I don't subscribe to the new age millennial crap, dude. No, no, it's not. It is <laughs> and always no, will be the knife hand. No, uh, someone was trying to. No, no, no. no. If it, I was, if, it, if, it, if, it, if I'm saying if if it, if the term knife hand is good enough for Mad Dog Mattis, by God, I don't want to get into that, that one. Then that that's a sore subject right now. We won't talk about that. But uh, because we don't do political stuff on here, but no, uh, someone was trying to describe this to me. And I was doing it too. I was like, "Why do you have to do the shark hand?" I was like, what? "This is a knife hand. What are you talking about?" I'm Air Force. I didn't even know that. I'm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm borderline pieces of shit. And why did you call it a shark hand? What it happened was is he was watching uh, Angry Cops and they were talking. He was talking about the shark attack, and he's like, "Well, you got to give a knife hand for the shark attack." And they got it mixed up, so it's like now it's a shark hand to that person. Yeah. Okay. So, so you had me subscribing to the whole thing that yeah. somehow. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. do that at all. You have that um, one? So we're all right. So we're gonna do the show a little backwards tonight because if you're watching us live, if you're watching us on delay, if you're watching us after the show is over, well, first and foremost, shame on you. Um <clears throat> I mean, we don't even have our super fan in, in attendance right now. So, but yeah. yeah. But also, also, we oh, got wait, was, December what? 9th. Is that you? It, what? Because we have somebody watching right now. No, that's me. Oh, I have it set up so we get at least one look at. Oh, well, let's see. All right, cool. All right. So, we're going to do the show a little bit backwards this week. Um, normally, we end up, the, we, we wrap. Oh, oh it's. Maria. Maria is here. Maria is in attendance. Oh, okay. Maria is in attendance. Are you driving right now, Maria? I almost put a block. She needs to sound off. Nah, it's all right. She's probably uh, doing whatever. No, well, because I was going to say we just throw her and throw her in here, but you know. Yeah, she's driving. Never mind. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, All right. So we're going to do the show a little bit backwards this week. So normally we end the show with NASCAR, but we're going to lead off with NASCAR. Yeah. Um, just because we know that Chris isn't here right now, he's going to be late. We're going to wait and talk about baseball at the very end because he is the only Ranger fan on the broadcast. Yeah, that's all I'm. Saying. There, there is a lot of stuff to talk about on on that, and there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, um, I don't. I mean, wanna, he, I got well, it. Okay, so here's the thing: I don't want to spend a terrible amount of time talking about the World Series, um, because with free agency started this morning. Yes. Yes. So there's a lot yeah, of big pieces sitting out Are there. They, and is is the uh, Rangers pitcher that? Yeah, he had apparent, that was another thing. Yeah, because he went yeah. like three three Jordan, different teams. Yeah, the, last, yeah. he, uh, the one that went through like three different teams. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's he's the one that he won a World Series. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, there's also Nathan Navaldi. Stick with Texas. Yeah, well, there's also also uh, Nathan Navaldi who uh, he uh, – <laughs> He was with the Red Sox in 2018 when we won the World Series, and so he hung out in Boston for a few more years, and then signed a free agency deal this this year uh, to to pitch for the Rangers, and you know, big game eight. So, but, but we're gonna we're getting off into the weeds of the World Series. Yeah. We're gonna find ourselves in a in a, in a, in a we do that. It happens. Yeah. So <clears throat> so NASCAR this weekend had it was championship weekend. Uh, was it the last one? It was the last weekend, yeah. Um, it the Ford team swept the weekend. Okay, they won the they won the, the, the Craftsman Truck Series championship. They won the Xfinity championship, and they also won the the, the Cup Series. Um, yeah, it but really, I mean, it, it, the the Cup Series race on Sunday, William Byron. Um, I mean, he made a pretty good go of it. Uh, he. I mean, he led for a majority of the uh, the first part of the la uh, the race, and he his car just faded. His team couldn't keep up with the changes of the track, and they they couldn't make adjustments fast enough. Um, Kyle Larson, he said that his car was was uh, you know tight on one end of the track. You know, it was it was it was tight up top, which means that the car doesn't want to turn. And it was loose down toward the bottom, which means the car wants to turn too much. And so there was like nowhere to go. It was like running on an edge the whole weekend. It's not that the car wasn't fast. It's just they couldn't get the car to hook up uh, setup wise. Um, so, I mean, he kept searching groove after groove after groove. I mean, they would hit on something for a little bit. And he'd make some gains. 
and it, the car would just fade. And yeah, I just, yeah, I can understand it wasn't that. Weekend, you know, and it's all good. So, um, uh, Christopher Bell, he was the only Toyota driver to be in the championship for, uh, he, he would, he drives for uh, Joe Gibbs racing. Um, his brakes faded on him. Uh, I mean, they run incredibly huge brakes and brake calipers in those cars. I mean, massive. And they've yeah. got air ducts in, 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 you know, on the front to channel air to those brakes to keep them cool. And he said that he knew that he had a problem earlier on in the race, about 75 laps in. His, he said he was starting to experience brake fade. And so what brake fade means is that, you know, it's like when you push the pedal, you, you don't have any feedback, right? It would just kind of gets spongy and Basically, soft. You're pushing the, pu you're pu pushing the pedal, but you're like, oh, it should have stopped there. Oh, it should have stopped there. At the very, oh, least, it should have, yeah, at the very least, it should have scrubbed off some some uh, momentum, you know, taking yeah. speed form. But, um, you know, he, he, he drove it down into a turn and th the car just kept going and just, the, the outside retaining wall just reached out and collected his car and he was, he was just done. Um, he hit it pretty hard. Uh, th there wasn't a lot of body damage per se, but like the suspension was kind of shot. Um, the, the toe link, um, on those front ends. <laughs> Don't they switch cars up if something bad happens like that? No, they they don't get to go to a backup. No, uh, the only time that they get to go to a backup is if like they're qualifying and they you know they wad up their their primary car, then they can roll the the, the backup car out. But okay, because that's what happened to us at Texas Speedway, right? No, no, no. Once the race started, that's the car. I thought someone switched cars. Mm -mm. Uh, nope. nope. Um, but you know, I mean, Ryan Blaney, uh, Ryan Blaney is kind of a throwback. Um, I used to watch his dad, Dave Blaney race all the time. Good guy. Um, he races for, uh, Penske, uh, you know, Penske racing, uh, you know, it, it, he, he ended up, I mean, he had the car to beat. I mean, he could basically just drive his car anywhere he wanted to uh what's funny is that william byron is actually uh ryan blaney's brother-in-law okay because uh william byron married his sister so <laughs> um you so know, he married I mean, the racing thing well, William Byron, I mean, the dude basically, I mean, the guy, he comes from like an amazing racing background. Um, and he, he built himself up. Um, William Byron actually kind of got his start at Hendrick Motorsports uh, running the simulators. You know, William Byron also owns an iRacing e, uh, e team. Oh, okay. So. And you know what I'm excited for also is that iRacing is finally coming to consoles. Oh, is it? Yeah, and so they have. Um, are you, you able? Know, are you you know, work your way up, right? You, you have to. You have to qualify by winning races in the lower brackets in order to get an invite to the Coca-Cola uh, NASCAR Coca-Cola Cup, right? Which is the uh, the the online racing uh, championship points. Uh, race have right? you seen some of those cars people uh make up or the set their setup well, they're, all the cars that are online are, are to spec they just create no, their no, own. no 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 i mean I'm, I'm talking uh okay uh i racing is internet racing maria yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah i racing is, is, is internet racing um what they do is they take real racetracks and they scan them in um so that way you get accurate uh surface conditions uh, I mean, everything is one to one recreated online, and so um, yeah. Maybe but all, yeah, like all their the set up, their set up, their set up, dude, dude. Well, I'm, they they, they cover a lot of different genres of racing. No, 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 no. They're they're set up like they have like three screens right here. Oh, you talking about their rigs, their racing rigs? Yes. Yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, these guys sit there and they pimp out a gaming rig, right? Like a gaming computer. 
and they'll they'll you know some guys will sit there and they've just got a force feedback wheel that they'll sit there on a laptop or you know just a regular yeah. monitor. And, and some uh, of these people they have like full on. I've seen yeah, one that actually I turn it see, one for I've got, one. I've got that curved monitor there. Yeah, and, you know, got the soundboard right there. Um, <laughs> but no, I've, I've seen some that they're like one for one literally driving you see all the whataburger uh, table tents that we we like jack yeah. every time we go to a whataburger people pay for those dude whataburger okay so there was an article in texas monthly whataburger is aware that that is the hot item now as a friend as, as as a as a as a corporation they spend about two hundred thousand dollars a year replacing those things and they're like okay fine uh, and they're cool with it. I mean, they they don't necessarily want you to do it, but they're not going to jump over the counter and 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 stop you from doing it. It's not a Waffle House, right? You know. Um. So, I mean, they're they're trained Navy SEALs at a Waffle House. I mean, well, I would say trained Navy SEALs. No, that that's doing a disservice to SEALs. It's more like they were the guys. They 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 were the people that rang the bell during Hell Week in Buds. They've got just enough of the suck to know how to embrace it. Sounds sus. Are you talking about because of my Whataburger things? See, this is why we need to have her in here so we can get that live feedback. Because otherwise, it's yeah. like Mark Watney sitting well, on the side of Mars waiting for an 18-minute turnaround time to, to, you know, get a question asked it's even it's it's kind of it's kind of as bad as uh doing it uh through Streamyard or zoom what we started up with but when we're face to face talking and everything it's like a streamless uh yeah uh, it's it's great I, I love the fact that you know because you and i are on stage and when chris is here he's on the stage but that value in okay well all right uh um, I'll dial her in. I yeah, can because you don't know how to uh, Bluetooth to your phone, so it's weird. Where are you at? There we go. There we go. Woo. What's up, Marie? What up? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angry faithful of all ages we've got our over the world uh over the road fan we have maria she is not in the studio but she is uh well what, what can we call the phone line because you know all the good big shows have got like, like their phone lines are sponsored um <laughs> we've got maria coming to you live on the uh bad touch bob hotline there we go <laughs> <laughs> i like that i like that you know? It's like phone <laughs> it in and find out where bad touch uh touched you this week. Yeah, right. So all right, um, so so the Whataburger so the Whataburger table tents, right? That's what they're called. Um they sell them on their website. How much are they? Well, I see I went on there. I went on there and you, if maybe they're sold out, I don't know, but uh, like the, the full numbered sets, I think they go from like one to 99 kind of a thing. Um, they're not on their website right now, but, but, um, they've got like the personalized ones where it's like class of whatever. Right. And then they, I saw it, this is Merry Christmas and it's a Whataburger table tent. And I was like, so I, sent, I sent a screenshot of it to Mindy and she goes, Oh my God, we need those in our life. <laughs> I was like, okay. So she goes, get them. So I was like, okay. Cause <clears throat> See what 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 our viewers and listeners fail to understand is that when it becomes time to decorate for Christmas, my wife and my sister in law, Still it is their saying. favorite time of year, dude. I'm not kidding you. It is like Christmas threw up in our house. <laughs> you got the little villages and stuff. Uh, yeah. There's villages there's new pictures to hang all over the place there's a tree to decorate that's got to be decorated a certain way i did manage to squirrel away my own little niche um we have an oh, extra christmas tree 
So we've got a game room upstairs. So I put the tree upstairs, a tree upstairs in the game room, and it is the nerd tree. I have got TARDISes from Doctor Who. I've got Doctor Who ornaments. I've got Star Trek and Star Wars ornaments from the from the Hallmark collection. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, so dude. And then and then you go to like Hobby Lobby and you can like find like the like the little has got nothing to do with Christmas ornaments on them. Like, like it, there's there's a, a an ornament that we found last year at Hobby Lobby, dude. It is a bag of ramen. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Going off of pieing the water burger tents. And, th- uh, and I was going through them. I was like, okay, it's like nine bucks for a whole set or some shit like that. They're not expensive, except for one. Can you tell me which one is the most expensive one? The one that says 69 on it. <laughs> going for, I can't believe the price on this, $600. What? Yes. <laughs> This dude has got number one for like water table tent on eBay. Yeah, six hundred bucks. Yeah, right. I will bribe a water burger person to go back in the office and grab it. Maria, what was that? If it was six point (laughs) nine, I'd understand. Yeah. But no, it's it's legitimately. I mean, I've uh, I'm looking looking on on these is some some of them are uh, the highest price for the uh, sixty nine one is like twenty bucks or something like that. But yeah, that was the most expensive one. Yeah, six. That's so weird. Let's see here. You pick the number. They're selling them for eight dollars a piece. Well, this guy's got he's this guy's got a sixty nine. Hey, scroll back up, David. Scroll back up. That's yeah, there's one, one right there. here. For like, bucks. I still don't want to pay 25 bucks for it. No, there's one for 35. There's one for like 25. There's one for 20. Well, especially when you get them free. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those ones that it's got it's it's one of those things that you're gonna have to like track it down. See, okay. Do you have a 69? Fold it. No, I don't. I don't. God, I don't. Um, See? I've got, all right. So I, You're mine, started, now. mine started four, and I've got a range that takes me to 94. So I've got four. Started, mine started four. 12. And I've got a 16, a 24, 33, 37, 43. 48, 48's a good number. Uh, 50. I've got an extra 50, David, if you want it. I'll take the extra 50 so I can put it up on my uh, wall 52, of cool stuff. 54, 65, 66, 67, 73, right? Basically, you're, you're, you're almost there on all that accounts, but you didn't make the mark. Dude, all right, so you remember... Back when McDonald's it's used to do it. no, you remember when McDonald's used to do the the Monopoly game? Yeah, right. And oh. you and 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 then the Sunday circuit. The whole, right? the whole like uh uh what was it uh yeah, documentary? They stopped, it. they stopped doing it because they realized that some of the workers, some of the employees, were rigging the game. Yeah, but, well, there's a documentary oh. where you could uh that that it was a uh, a big scam. Yeah, well. You would go like in the Sunday paper just the, before the game started or whatever. You'd get a free game board, right? Yeah. Well, what we, we what we used to do when I was in the army, we used to they used to come in the Fort Campbell Courier, right? Mm-hmm. We'd sit there on battalion staff duty, and we'd take all the McDonald all the uh, Monopoly boards out of the newspapers, and we'd pull all the game pieces, right? So by the time we got done, we had one one board. We well, there was two of us that each had a board that had every game piece it was only missing one from each color all the way around oh wow yeah and boy i'm telling you you could not eat enough big macs or make ribs to try to find a piece that you already didn't have yeah there's a it's a big 
it is a big scam how how they did it, but it's understandable, you know. Yeah, you do I, like one game piece it, from from what I gathered is like one side of the country had X amount of uh, game pieces, and one side of the country had an X amount of other game oh, pieces. Man, screw everybody that lived in a flyover state. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so. But, you know, but yeah, Ryan Blaney winning the the the, the points championship for for the uh, for the Cup guys. He 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 got to take home the Bill French Trophy. He's on his media tour right now. Um, he's Which only lasts, they usually only last for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. so. But um, yeah, I, I was okay with him winning it. Obviously, I wanted to see um, one of the Hendrick guys win it, but um, I was okay with that. Uh, Ryan Blaney, he's he's a good guy. I mean, he's a, he's a great racer. He's going to be a good champion for the sport. Um, you know, there's always next year. So, uh, <clears throat> it's just the fact that, you know, he, I mean, the guy's not even 30 yet. I think he's like 25, 26. Yeah, he's just got some years on him. So, yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 the future of the sport talent wise is in pretty good hands for, for a few years. Now, whether or not NASCAR decides to drive all the fans away like Robert Manfred's trying to do with baseball by putting in stupid rules, we'll see. But um, there's that other, other oh. thing that people are talking about, about the, the Rangers, too. The whole uh, they didn't celebrate Pride Month. Yeah. You know, and, and there was a lot of people that that pulled for the Rangers specifically for that reason. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, it is what it is, but you know, um, yeah. all right, we, so. do, we do have a little bit of uh actual news news with uh NFL, yeah. Uh, and this happened last uh, week, and we did not get to cover it because it happened like right after we got done with our uh uh episode. But Oakland Raiders fired out like. What, fired their, the GM and their head coach. Yeah, they 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 fired, uh, and it's all because of from what this says is uh, Raiders fired coach uh, Josh McDaniels and general manager David Ziegler on October thirty first, which happened last week, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, Las Vegas was three of five this season under McDaniels and nine sixteen since he took over in twenty twenty two. Raiders uh, quarterback uh, Andrew O'Connell. Who replaced off season acquired uh, Jimmy uh, Garoppolo. Garoppolo, okay, uh, as, as a starter and was sixteen <laughs> of twenty nine passing. Well, yeah, right. So Jimmy G, whenever he came in um, from San Francisco, right, he he was supposed to be the savior of Raider Nation. He was supposed to be the guy that brought them to the promised land, right? And and it it didn't work out that way. Um, Cowboys fan had the same thing with Dax Shepard. So, I mean, Dak Prescott, Prescott, God, I'm looking at the words. Oh my God. I've said, it, I've already said it last week. So I, I'm, a, I'm a genius, but that stupid train hits me way too much. Oh. It's because you're too busy running your mouth to hear the train. I I'll, 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 I'll totally agree with you on that one. Okay. Totally All right. So before we get into last week's picks um, and this week's picks, I am going to try to see if Colin is ready. We're, we're this week. We're just kind of free free forming the show here. She's only our best one. Yay, Colin! No, yeah, yet he's not in here yet. Beesh. I can yay for him anytime I want. Let let her yay. Oh, uh, by the way, we're what my neighbor is like. Just remember to uh, say something nice about the Green Bay Packers. I was like, I don't, I don't talk <laughs> about you on my news Wait, show. It's hold on. The Green Green Bay Packers. Okay, um, something nice. Um, let me see here. Wait, wait, wait for it. Um. You're taking too long. They man. didn't cheat their stockholders out of any value this week. There, we said something nice. I mean, you're not wrong. 
It, it's sad that we had to come up. You know what? That will, that might be our our thing now. Is we have to say something nice to one of the horrible teams that we picked to win. I am never saying something nice about the donkeys. They did win this week, didn't they? Never going to say a nice thing about the donkeys. I mean, the donkeys. Who the hell are the donkeys? Broncos. What? The Broncos. It, it's the team from Denver. They're so yeah, the Denver Broncos. Broncos. Okay. I like I like them less That's than I like Philadelphia, and I loathe Philadelphia. Oh my! I still can't believe All that right. this week. Yeah, well, we'll get into that here in just a minute. Let's go, Colin. Come on, 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 come on. All right, so here we go. Yeah, there, there is something that I found on uh, on TikTok. Oh. What is up, guy? Hello. What's going on, Colin? Hello. There's a mysterious oh, voice coming Colin. from the ether. That is Maria. Say hi to Maria. Hello. Did you get like Hello. mouth surgery or something like that? Or you he's he's just No, I I was having the French dip from McAllister's and like I, I used the sauce. Oh, okay. That's some good stuff. Yeah. All right, bud. You ready to jump into it? Chris isn't here yet. He's running late, so we're just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. So you ready to jump into yours? You're All right. Rising from the smoke and haze of desolation comes a ronin, bent on wrongdoing that which has been set right. Here for your ears and eyes to feast upon, it is my genetic code. Ladies and gentlemen, angry faithful of all ages, it is time for joke time with Colin. Now, I'm sad to say I only have one joke, but it's a good one. Oh, send it. So uh, Stephen Hawking walked into a bar. Oh, wait. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, it got me. I had to think about it. I was like, oh, wait. I was like, oh, he already messed up the... Oh, oh, (laughs) oh. Oh. Oh, oh boy good joke for our psychos and sociopath people that listen to that show because oh. i've actually i actually started doing it to where I'll, I'll do like uh a thing to where it's like stephen hawking from beyond the grave give me your intelligence for a moment so you can explain this word and i'll i'll do that so I have a new host, kind of, for Psychos and Sociopaths. That helps me a lot. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I've actually gotten a couple of... Uh, we have subscribers that love that. That's what surprised me. It's like, dude, okay. this Stephen Hawking thing is freaking hilarious. I'm actually thinking about doing a uh, like a little skit thing to where I'm talking to Stephen Hawking and he's talking back through the computer and everything. I'm, yeah, I'm working it out. That one, uh, I forget what he's got. I think it's like a spina bifida or something like that. Uh, he's on TikTok and he like still like scoots across the floor. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, he did a oh, stitch in the video where he's like, do, do, do an, do, do your, uh, your best impression of a celebrity. And so it flashed over to him. And he's got the laptop in his lap and he just kind of and he hits the button and it says, Hi, I'm Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> I like the other one where the guy uh, it's a totally different guy. He's going or long. He's like uh I was like, What are you going for Halloween? Timmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, we are very disturbed individuals. Yeah. If you can't f- have fun with your disabilities, you know, you're pretty much uh, not worth anything. Right. I mean, it's 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 like, uh, you know, that saying, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Dude, That'd be one hell of a way to find out you're adopted, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I don't know what has happened, but it's so, Dad, you know how like when I read out loud, I just can't read. Right. It's gotten so bad. Like I can't it's because you as the weeks progress, you you find that you you're spending more and more time with David online. It's <laughs> I, I I didn't wanna I was gonna say I caught the David, but I was I was trying to be a little nice. Yeah, because then it just sounds criminal. Don't yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you and he likes it. No, 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 I don't. Bring it, don't chime in on this one. No, no, no. My my age limit is 25. <laughs> God damn it, Maria, stop helping. I'm going up right now. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Dang it. <laughs> He doesn't have an axe moon, so what the hell? <laughs> oh man, I can't even defend myself. That's how bad it is. I, I can't even defend myself off this one because any kind of tidbit could be taken wrong. Tidbit? Oh, I take lots of things wrong. Like when you said if you can't play with your disabilities. And I was gonna say, put her down. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm down with the down though. The what was it? The 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 Victoria. I'm down like syndrome. Is that what you're trying to say? No, a Victoria. <laughs> I think it's Victoria's Secret or Sport Secret Secret has, a, has has a uh, has a Down syndrome model. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. here, here is the thing. Uh, someone, me, someone was talking about it as because she got you know uh, bolt ons, and I was like, uh, "How?" She got a breast and explain that one for you, Maria. I understand what okay. I know what bolt ons are. Okay. Okay. Goodness. Now here's my dilemma with this. Okay, she's special needs. Uh huh. So. How is she able to sign off on that? Someone had to sign because off I mean, on that. Not, it's like autism. I think that there's a, there's a spectrum there where you've got high functioning and then you got the low functioning. Yeah, I get that. But still, I feel bad as a doctor. I mean, there's pr- people out there that just pick up paychecks, but I, I'm sure I there's a joke. I'm sure there's a joke in there. Did she want to know? I, I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, David, but like unemployed people that just don't work. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's <laughs> it's like, I mean, you can't, you can't fix the top part, but you fix the bottom part. It's like having a goddamn uh, good headlights, as Maria likes to say it, but the rest of the bo- uh, the rest of the uh, car, the, the top part, it's like dented in. We we call them big eyes, honey. Big eyes. Okay. She has really big eyes. Okay. Yeah, I get that one. Right. Unlike I'm sorry and apo- I apologize, which have they mean the same thing except at a funeral. <laughs> yeah. Or or <clears throat> oh god. Oh. What was what was that? Uh. God, I can't remember that joke that uh, Danger did. Justin Danger. I still can't believe he's a uh, Air Force ammo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That dude makes a killing on TikTok now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just see that he got? I'm really surprised. He got the uh, Wonder yeah, Bread bumper. Yeah, he he got the he got Ryan Priest uh, Ryan Priest's. Uh, Bumper from the race, uh, at yeah. yeah, hanging above yeah. his TV in his in his in his room, man cave, whatever. And I'm like, damn, we're not there yet. So we'll David, get there. I'm really disappointed in you. Like most women, so it's not surprising. <laughs> I'm disappointed that you didn't get the joke after it. You earlier, which 
Which one? I might have missed the it. Six point nine. Yeah, I don't get that one. What the point? Punctuation, dude. It's everything. Oh, okay. Uh, I was trying to figure out the one. Right period. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's in <laughs> by a period. Yeah. Like now, if you were from Arkansas or Alabama, you know, let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma mean two separate things because of the, the, the <laughs> wow. yeah or the difference between what, what what's one thing you can say during uh during sex and at a funeral i'm 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 i know oh, no. what, what are, well, you're, you're well, thinking of those well, those uh whose line skits it's like things you can say <laughs> Things you can say at a funeral, but not to your partner. Oh, from uh, <laughs> yeah, whose line was it? Anyway? Yeah, whose line is it anyway? Yeah, yeah, like you know, Ryan Styles will get up there and be like, "Can't believe we stuffed it, stuffed that in there." <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. That show is so funny. Yeah, I. <laughs> My stepson Sam the other day, he was he was trying to give me grief. Like he was trying to bust my balls about something. I forget it was or what it was. And I, I'm in the kitchen and I and I'm I'm unloading the dishwasher and I, I just kind of looked at him. I was like, you know, Sam, I, I said, when I die, I want I want you to be a pallbearer at my funeral. And he's like, Really? I was like, Yes, yeah, so you can let me down one more time. And he, <laughs> oh he looks at me and he was like Johnny. Johnny. I was like, yep. He goes, that was hurtful. I was like, oh, we'll put some dirt on it. You'll be okay. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. All my kids, my kids know that I love them. <laughs> it's just... Well, with most of my friends nowadays, I'm, I'm hoping they get cancer and lose some weight because I don't know if I could lift that much. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Oh, come on. Damn. See, David's like when well, he's one of those friends that unlike snow, when you pee on them, he's supposed to disappear. Yeah. 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 Or <clears throat> or uh I'm sorry, you lost me at pee on David. God said, thank you, Maria. Friends are, you know, friends are supposed to be like snow when you pee on them, they disappear. Yeah. You pee on David and he kind of sticks around. Yeah. Oh, okay. Terrible friend. So. <laughs> Do what? I, I'm sorry. I, am, I am both a good and terrible friend. I will gladly admit that. Like, sometimes I'm like, go die in a hole somewhere. And other times I'm like, you good? You don't want to pee on me, right? No. Please don't pee on me. Okay. Well, you said you were a good friend and a bad friend. I'm just saying that's no. all the relationship we have. What, uh, yeah. Maria? I'm going to bring something very what? vital to your attention. You're talking to a 14. Okay. So don't talk about golden showers. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you get canceled. <laughs> so that was a fun run, right? 133 episodes, and it took the super fan to, to, to take us down. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Jason finally pu pulled that, uh, that one scene that we were talking about when we were in NASCAR mm -hmm. about how, how you know, Dave. I want to. I want to go to your funeral knowing that there is something I could do to stop it. Oh right, yeah. yeah. I, have, I, I want you to call me at three a.m. so I can ignore the call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh Lord, God, I love that. Oh, did you see that? Uh, I, I sent him this, but they have like uh, superhero uh, uh, 
whiskey fl- uh, whiskey barrels with like the superhero uh, emblem on wood, but you mm-hmm. you press a button and it pops up and it has like the flask. Uh, I guess it, would it be flask? No, it wouldn't be a flask. It would ha- well, I ha- one of them had a flask, but it had like uh, the uh, bottle that you put the whiskey in and the glasses, and they all have the superhero emblem. Uh, hero emblem on them why is this necessary in life why is it not necessary why is it not in my freaking house having something like that because somewhere hidden in the recesses and transoms of your mind that i'm not an alcoholic lies the brain (laughs) the reasoning skills of an adult yeah, but when you have like the dude, you gank water burger tents. Dude, yeah, you don't have to end. Let him have his fantasy hey, about you know this. Yeah, hey, hey, to my credit. Hey, 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 ceasefire, ceasefire. To my credit, they don't talk me a fucking thing. What about your uh your uh uh Starship Enterprise build? You mean that one? No, the uh, sorry, the other one. <laughs> how do you get yours to do that mine doesn't do I that don't, i don't know well because i'm running i'm running the newer macbook oh okay yeah. well okay all right so <clears throat> yeah i mean yeah i mean i build stuff like this no the one that you said uh, at the end of it you're going to spend like 800 dollars on it Dude, it's three feet fucking long, bro. Yeah, I'm going to have to. No, no, no. Then you want to complain about the whole uh, barrel with the the Batman one and everything? I'll Hold on. I got hold it. No, 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 no. You don't even have to put it on the oh, screen. No. And then you said, no, I'm about to shoot your logic so full of holes right now. So just kind of stand fast. All right. You know the difference between that Enterprise refit that I'm going to spend about eight to nine months building versus the barrel of whiskey that somebody took and threw a logo on that you're going to spend, I don't know, how much? Five, six hundred dollars? I don't know. What, I, saw this I mean, I, I will have taken the time, the effort, used talents and skills to customize that to be exactly the way I want it. Versus I saw you. You don't just want to follow some instructions. No. You have to. See, you have to thing about, no, no, no. See, Maria, the beautiful thing about building models is that you uh-huh. have artistic. You have artistic freedoms. Okay, you can make it as screen accurate as you as you want, which is the goal for that build is to make it a screen accurate model. Lights, you know, huh. doing the, the, the Aztec panel. Like, see, man, dude, that is... Loud ring. <sighs> that looks so I'm cool, just, though. You know, but so much, that would take up so much space. Oh, you I, just put it in the corner. That, that's a side put you in the corner, but, you know, it, you're not going to be as cool as that thing. I, I, yeah. dude i i just i don't know man it and it's not it's got nothing to do with my love or, or disdain for for things all things superhero i mean i've got master chief living up there right yeah but I, it, that to me that just it's, it just doesn't okay okay not necessary. What if what if they instead of a superhero they put a uh they put like uh, a Red Sox stuff on there? Not even it, then. Really? Yeah, not even then. Because that's what a liquor cabinet's for. No, okay. I mean, and I've got one of those right there when you walk in my front door. <laughs> that's pretty bad it's at the front door. <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> I mean, Where would you rather him put it at the back door? No, if it's at the I front door, he gets home. The that's the first house? thing he grabs. To be fair, Maria, David equates alcohol with the back door anyway. So this is true. 
Except for that one time. <laughs> oh my god, we need Chris. We need Chris to show up. No, he would make it worse. He would like, hey guys, I brought some more gasoline. <laughs> I told okay, so Maria, did you catch the first part of the show when I was talking about Army beating Air Force uh this this past Saturday? Um no, I did not because I was driving through Nashville trying not to get run over. Okay, so when the army has these big like formations, right? Uh a lot of pomp and circumstance, right? You know, like a, a divisional size. Uh, formation they have bugle calls that the right. in order in, in order their attention the adjutant or adjutants call the uh, parade rest you got present arms you got order arms and you've got the officers call and there's david going away because why did david leave what was fine i mean i can see him he, he didn't like leave leave so yeah he just excused himself for a second I, you know, we, he tried to start the show and I was like, wait a minute, there's something like, you know, like five minutes prior to, aren't we supposed to get like a warning? And then I played the attention and then the adjutant's call for, for or the bugle calls. And he was like, are you done? Are you done now? I was like, yeah, yeah. And then he gets done doing his weird sport. And I go into, uh, playing the, uh, the army song. Cause I, I found the website for the, for, for the U S army, uh, Europe and Africa band and chorus. <laughs> it's got those sound bites um, on their website so i was just playing them because you know while the army song was playing i was talking about how number 19 ranked number 19 air force who was seven and or eight no going into this past weekend lost to unranked two and six army <laughs> yeah David was not happy. He was not happy on Saturday when he realized that our Air Force had lost to the Army, and he was not happy with me today. But I told Chris all about it. I said, this is what I'm going to do. And he was like, oh, hell yeah, do it. And I was like, all right, cool. And then he texts us, like, just prior to the show starting that he's going to be late. I'm like, dang, coming. Man, he missed joke time. Yeah, he missed joke time. As a matter of fact, let me... Uh... I am almost caught up on the boys. Yeah? Yep, I got like four episodes left until I'm caught up. That's what's up. Oh. The third season is so funny. Like, oh my god. Yeah, no, season three of the boys is hilarious. Like I'm season stronger. three episode one. Whoa. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I am better. <laughs> I just started watching Invincible, uh, the second season. That was, yeah. All right, I'm 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 down with it. What I'm looking forward to is uh, season two of Reacher. Um, starting on uh, December fifteenth on Amazon, uh, on Prime. I'm I'm still waiting for more episodes of Castlevania. The new one, like the new mm -hmm. series. Maria, are you still there? Oh, wait. I think she's not there anymore. Oh, no. I'm here. Oh, okay. okay. And David was here, and now he's gone. Yeah, yeah, Mark, he keeps that was, out. Cause... That was almost a brown snail trail. What? Oh, good lord. Well, that's yeah. just because you're... you're, you're, you're you don't share, honey. Yeah. Don't care. Maria, that is just because he's showing off the he's just showing off the fact that he he obtained, you know, the championship title for anal gangbang 2023. I was surprised. I almost took him I, I almost didn't take it all the way. Oh, better him than me. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why when David farts, it doesn't make a sound. It's it's a wind tunnel now. I mean He's possibly dealing with a prolapsed anus. It's almost like an owl. <laughs> he doesn't leave freaks in his drawers anymore. They're rings. It's like a really, it's like a really dirty Sonic the Hedgehog. 
<laughs> oh my god, I, can't. I can do smoke rings with my farts. <laughs> why do, why do I... <laughs> if she dies because of this, this, this is gonna make me feel bad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right, well. I, I, sent, I, I I asked I asked Chris for a sit rep and uh, we I have not heard from him yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump into the picks for this week and go over last week's picks. So we're gonna we're gonna do that here. Um, Don't we usually do our last week's picks first? Well, you, you know what I mean, David. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in the ass. That's all right. My I was just thinking my dyslexia was kicking in again. No, 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 it, it, it was not. Okay. All right. And let me reduce the size of the screen a little bit. Okay. And scores. Let me come down here to present so that way I can... Jump in there. Okay. So <clears throat> we're starting. <laughs> we're starting last week off with a with, with a with a bit of a high note. Uh we picked the Titans to beat the Steelers because for whatever reason. Yeah, we thought that that was a good idea. Um the Steelers beat the Titans 20 to 16. You know. I really, I did not want to pick the Dolphins to beat the Chiefs in Germany. They were in Germany? Yeah, they were playing in Germany. Uh, the games wow. came on at like 8.30 in the morning on Sunday. I think it was oh, wow. 21 to... 21 to 14, the Chiefs, the Swifties, beat the Dolphins. I Please don't do that ever again. I, I, I don't what, get that. The Swifties? God, yes, don't... <laughs> <laughs> there's certain things there's certain lines i don't want to be drawn into the PTSD uh, and flashback yeah. like you know when he sent taylor swift a dm talking about how he liked her music and then she responded with a restraining order that's most women but <laughs> oh. surprise <laughs> no i i just i just i just don't get the whole taylor swift yeah she's no, dating travis kelsey no, no, no. I get that. No, I get that. Okay. I get that. I totally get that. But I don't get the whole. I never. I'm not one of those people you don't that. Get Swift Nation. I don't get any kind of that. <laughs> the, like fondness of celebrities to where you, you. Oh my God! I can't believe you're here. I'm like, uh, he. I don't. He, he eat. I don't like Taylor Swift like music at all. And most Taylor Swift fans, I don't even like most of their music anyway. <laughs> You guys just have to shake it off. That's all it is. Um, <laughs> <God. laughs> I told you about that line, didn't I? That's something that you don't sniff up in your nose, we man. It's about, just the way you just know. We talk about her and who she's with. <laughs> hey, based on Taylor's version of events. <laughs> okay, getting back to the picks. Chris and I picked the Falcon or the, the the Vikings to beat the Falcons. David decided he was going to go out on a limb and take the Falcons to beat the Vikings. Well, <laughs> David was wrong. 31-28 Vikings. Then we had the Ravens uh pick to beat the Seahawks. That was that that happened in a big 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 way. Um that, that's surprising too. It really, do you think it was that surprising? Well, uh, Seahawks are what they're. Ah, fuck, I have it. I have it up on mine, so I don't have to squint. Well, they're five and three now. Yeah, but the Ravens are now seven and two. So, but thirty thirty seven to three. I mean, that score looked. That was that was horrific from the Army Air Force score. So I'm just kind of putting that out there. God damn it, John. <laughs> <laughs> then we had the Browns pick to beat the Cardinals, which that happened twenty-seven to uh, to nothing. So the Browns pitched a shutout, which is surprising. Browns are actually getting their uh, their their steam back a little bit from yeah 
couple of games. And then we had the Rams over the Packers. <laughs> and just just like teams from LA, they let us down. Um <clears throat> yeah. this is the second and the last good thing about the Packers that we're going to say this week. The Packers won. Ooh, two things. Yeah, I, I know. I'm I, right now. I am over my quota for for nice so things. Give me more out. I mean, sure. just, just to, just to make sure thing. that there's no like anomaly in the readings there. I'm going to have to take a good deed away from somebody in the general public. So basically, you're going to rob a bank. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. Take of a deficit. I mean, it's only the Packers. I mean, come on. Okay, you can steal can- <laughs> candy from a kid. Uh, just snatch it right in front of him, looking dead. No, no. To quote Frank, I'm gonna, or to paraphrase Frank, rather, Colin, you're gonna like this. I'm gonna take a big drink of champagne. I'm gonna roll down the window as I'm driving past a homeless person, and I'm gonna spit it out onto him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him, "How's the high life taste?" You ah! son of a bitch. Hey, hey, no, no, <laughs> no. That, that was my joke. That no. <laughs> that was a good one. We picked the Buccaneers to beat the Texans, and by God, that almost happened. But then C.J. Stroud woke up and realized that draft. I played football. Oh my God! <laughs> I gotta earn this paycheck. They took me what round? They took me in the first round. They took me first. <laughs> I was the number two pick. I got it. I got to earn this paycheck. <laughs> so yeah, thirty-nine, thirty-seven Texans. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody. No, someone someone on the team realized that it's almost the first of the month and they got to do rent. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, see, that's the thing about a contract. I mean, don't really have to worry about. But anyways, moving on. Digress. We picked the Redskins. That's the commanders for all you PC people. We picked the Redskins to beat the Patriots, and that happened 20 to 17. Um, moving on, we had the Saints over the Bears. We got that one right, 24 to 17. That one didn't surprise me. No, that one did not. Um, this next game did, though. We picked the Panthers to beat the Colts, and the Colts showed up in in Carolina and was like, man, eh, we're, we're, we're kind of are you know we're, we're we're tired of being we're, we're tired of getting the the the, the hand me downs we're we're tired of getting the sloppy seconds now we want first pick at the strip club tonight so they went out and beat the the Panthers twenty seven to thirteen and then we had the Giants over the Raiders I knew I, get- I knew <laughs> better I knew better no. What happened was, is we didn't get the information that we 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 were we realized what happened uh, about the uh, whole coaching team just getting like axed and them getting a whole new coaching team. Yeah. Now, this next game, it was actually a better game than the score reflected. Um, Cowboys lost to the Eagles, twenty three to twenty eight. Now, this next game. Now, okay, on this one, I well, still me, like... Me, do, 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 go ahead. We're moving on. This next game. <laughs> Chris and I had picked the Bills to beat the Bengals because, well, the Bengals really hadn't shown us a lot. David decided he was going to take the Bengals because why? Well, just it was emotional. It was an emotional. I, I said that last week, it was fully and emotional. Very rarely, very rarely does it pay off, but David pulled through. He got an emotional pick right this our last week. The Bengals beat the Bills twenty four to eighteen, and then um, you know what game we did not throw a pick for was. Monday night game. Chargers at the Jets. I don't know why we didn't do a pick for that game. We probably would have picked the Jets anyway. <laughs> no. We'd have gotten that one wrong. So you know what? Just by virtue, that one's gonna be the hey, you got everything right this week pick because we failed to do the Monday night pick. So yeah. All right. So moving on to week 10 in the league. 
we are starting from scratch here. All right. Um, we're starting off Thursday night football with a game of irrelevancy. We've got the Panthers at the Bears. Um, the Panthers are all hot off the heels of a disappointing loss this or this past weekend uh, to the Indianapolis Colts. And the Bears. Well, the Bears did what the Bears are doing. I I I I I don't know what to say or or what what how to approach this game. Just choose the freaking um, Panthers. All right, let's just go with the Panthers. Yeah. Stop! Stop! Like uh, showboating and I'm not like showboating. It. I'm really not because I, I'm trying to I'm trying to save our our record here. That's that's what I'm trying to do. So. Yeah, but just going. You know what? Yeah, Panthers. If we choose the Bears, it would be a, like a miracle. See, if I threw a dart board, if I threw a dart at the at the screen, I'd ruin this really nice twenty seven inch curved monitor, and I don't want to do that. All right, moving on. Yeah, uh, Colts over the Patriots. I think that, that no. Well, you know what? Yeah, Colts over the Patriots. Yeah. Patriots haven't really been doing them uh, that well this way oh, no. this year, uh, but they are playing in Frankfurt, Germany. They're playing in Germany this weekend, so um, look for that game. That's going to be an eight thirty Central Time game on Sunday morning. Um, got the Browns at the Ravens. I'm taking the Ravens, even though the uh, the Browns have been you know pretty hot here lately. I'm taking the Ravens. All right. Um, the Texans at the Bengals. Going with the Bengals? Yeah, we're going with the Bengals. It's almost, it's almost as bad as trying to, it's like, well, who's playing the Bears this week? Oh, who's the, who, who's going to have a winning streak this week? Oh, it's going right. to be, uh, um, we've got the 49ers at the Jags. I'm actually going to take the oh, Jags. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got something for that. The, 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 uh, th this would go in with, no, that's not that one. Never, never mind. I had one. I've I've found this one where it's all the all the te Texas teams that's uh, won uh, a yeah, championship. I saw that one, saw that one in, in the Texans. They were, they were like uh, the mini me. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one this morning. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, we've got the uh, Saints at the Vikings. Um, this is kind of a toss up in my book. I'll take the Vikings though. I would I would go with the Vikings. Yeah. I, I really don't like the Saints all too well. And I might lose some people on here because of that. But well, I the mean, Vikings is actually they're they're a decent team this year. They're just not yeah. they're not gonna they're not gonna be Super Bowl champs again this year. But they're, would not, take, but they're not I mean they'll get to the playoffs, but they're not even gonna get close to the to the conference championship game. So Okay, yeah. Next on the docket, we've got the uh, the Fudge Packers at the uh, the the Steelers. So I told you I was never gonna. I wasn't gonna. I was only gonna say two nice things this week. Um, up to your name, so that's okay. I'm gonna take the the Steelers over the Cheeseheads. Uh, uh no, nah, I'd go with it. Yeah. Yeah, you you you're gonna I stick. Try, I was trying to I was trying to think on this one because it's one of those ones where you're like looking at it. And it's like they're 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 both those teams aren't top uh, top tier right now, and you're trying to figure out which one's the worst one. <laughs> which team wants to lose the less or the least? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of which, that's a perfect segue into the into the next game on the docket: the Titans at the Buccaneers. Um. I'm going to take the Bucks on this one, honestly. I was going to go with. Uh, I'm going with that one too. And then we've got the Falcons at the Cardinals. I'm going to take the Falcons. Yeah, it's kind of a <laughs> which Lions one rule the hen house there, right? Yeah. Um, Lions at the Chargers. Lions had the week off last week, um, so they're rested. The Chargers, yeah, they won, but. Eh. It's still the Chargers. Are you used to you want the Chargers? No, I I want the Lions. I like the Lions okay. better. All right. 
Good, because that's where I was going to go. Good. All right. <clears throat> so glad we the football division. Giants are coming to AT&T Stadium to try and defeat the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys showed some uh, some resilience there towards the end of the game in Philadelphia. I'm going to take the Cowboys, and it's not an emotional pick. I'm actually being analytical about this one. Um, I say yeah. that they're, they're going to get the season sweep over the Giants, and uh, they're going to take care of that uh, pretty pretty. Yeah, the Cowboys are going to... Hold on. The Cowboys are going to... <laughs> You know what? I'm glad you already said it. We'll go with that. I was trying to be, you know, productive and everything and, and, and agree with you, but it didn't. Too much. I, bad acid oh, reflux. You were, you, oh, that was that was a, a vomit gag? Oh, that's so not what I thought that was. Oh, oh man. So my wife walked in. And she shows me a TikTok, and she's gonna send it to me. Is it? Oh, is it a Facebook reel? No, oh, that sucks. Okay. I'm not signing into Facebook on on my Mac. Just I'm just it, not doing send it. Send it to me. Send it to me. No, I'll I'll I'll, I'll play it. I'll play it. Yeah. No, we're recording still. I like how we're so professional. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Maria, I know that you were driving, so you can't see it. So you're you're having to listen. The video is is a gentleman who is fisting a muddy hole, right? And then you heard the sound. And the moon is looking at the earth because the earth has got these big eyeballs going, oh my God, right? And the, the moon is like, oh. And the sun is looking at it all shocked, going, Yo, Kero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I can hear the sound. So someone's going to have to send that to me so that I can hear uh, all right, it. All right. All right. Tell, tell, tell you what. Tell you what. I'll, I'll do you one better here. We're going to we're gonna just post that in the group. In the super secret group. Yep. The secret, <laughs> secret, super secret squirrel group. That's what I. Yeah, you know what? That's just rename it the super secret squirrel group. Yeah. Digressing, we are moving on, gentlemen and lady. We've got the uh, Redskins at the Seahawks. The Seahawks have been playing like absolute dog water here lately. I'm yeah, sure. they were they were top tier in the beginning of the season, and then they just let us all down. Kind of feel like yeah. a Cowboys fan now. But we're we're right um, <laughs> taking the sea or taking the Seahawks to lose against the Redskins. <laughs> Um, then we got the Jets at the Raiders. Um, Raiders, Raiders are really are, are we going down that road again? I don't like Jets, I don't either, but I mean, even Jets fans don't like themselves. You sound so angry, David. Well, it's the Jets. I mean, I heard that the prison guard that was responsible for like uh falling asleep when Epstein hung him. Hung himself or didn't hang himself, or he was a Jets fan. See, <laughs> they have no will. Monday night, we've got the donkeys at the Bills. Bills taking the Bills. All right. So to recap our picks for next week, David, I'm about to send these to you. We've got the Panthers over the Bears. We have got the Colts over the Pats. Ravens over the Colt. Ravens over the Colt. What? How did I do that? Hold on just a second. Ravens over the Browns. Wow. Autocorrect corrected Browns to the Colts for some reason. That is weird. It's a good thing I, I go I over. What happened last week. Week. Panthers over the Bears, Colts over the Pats, Ravens over the Browns, Bengals over the Texans, Jags over the Niners, Vikings over the Saints, Steelers beating the <clears throat> Cheeseheads from Wisconsin, um, Bucks over the Titans, Falcons over the Cards, Lions over the Chargers, Cowboys over the Football Giants, Redskins over the Seahawks, Raiders over the Jets, and Bills over the Donkeys. 
So look for that on the uh, Angry Me page. David will be posting that here pretty quickly. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, gripes, moans, groan, groans, complaints, feel free to lodge them with our complaint department. Um, just dial that number, 1-800-GO-FUCK-YOURSELF. <laughs> I don't know. It just sounded professional. Anyways. Um, almost. Yeah, almost. So here's what we're going to do now. Um, gum. I mean, where where the heck is Chris? He, he's not know. here yet. He's not here yet. We're, we're just... Just gonna have to go on without him. So, in case you have been living under a rock, if you live anywhere within the state of Texas, I'm sure you've heard by now that the Texas Rangers finally managed to win a World Series. Good for them. I'm it's like uh, 65 years. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, you know, anytime you brought up 2011. And Nelson Cruz, it was like, I mean, it was like kicking. I mean, you would think that Rangers fans, by the way that they were reacting, you would just kick their brand new puppy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, well, I, I got, I got something for that. Hold on, real quick. I got the look at the. Uh, is it the TikTok video you were talking about 10 minutes ago that just somehow doesn't seem relevant anymore? Because we're not talking no, about it. not that one. <laughs> this one. This one's a fun one. This is a fun one. And I'll get to the uh, other one. From uh, Dumb and Dumber. We're waiting. <laughs> Are you not going to play it? It's playing right now. Is it not? Yeah. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Yes, it is. No, there is no sound at all. <laughs> I heard the whole thing because you because he's got you on Bluetooth. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. This this was this was okay. actually played during the uh, uh uh Cowboys game. It was a commercial on Fox, and this was actually this is the one that was actually really really good. And it's only like two minutes long. It's been an incredible season. It's been an awesome year. All the adversity and the challenges and everything y'all been through this season. Y'all been amazing and persevered. I've been waiting for this for 23 years. Since I was way down here. I've been a Rangers fan a long time. We always got baseball cards and starting on Ryan. We came so close, what, 12 years ago? We're in tears when we lost. Disappointment after disappointment. We never knew when they were going to come back. This year, we put it all together. People didn't expect us to be in this position. And through all the highs and the lows, you stuck it out, and you stuck by each other, and um, that's the Texas way to do it. Let's go! The Texas Rangers win the World Series! He's crying for the right reasons, because we did it! We did it! How does this feel? The celebration continues on the field. So there is that. That was, uh, it, come on, you got to admit, that was a tearjerker. Fun fact. Nobody cared. It was a jerker for sure, but it wasn't a tear jerker. Anyways, now now there's only five teams that's never won a World Series. <laughs> Can you name them, David, without looking it up? No. Tampa Bay, San Diego, Colorado, 
let's see here. Seattle, San Diego, Colorado, Tampa Bay. And uh, yeah, no, there's just four teams now. No, there's five. No, 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 don't look it up. Oh, Chris is now on his way home. Oh, my God. Oh, Jack is not in. He's not coming. He's on his way home, so we're at the hour 23 mark. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we, we, we can wait. All right, well. Because he's the dedicated Rangers fan. He is, he is, but he's he's missing his section of the show. Um yeah. so sad. Uh I'm waiting, David. I'm waiting patiently. It takes a long time to <laughs> You think that I could like type really uh, good with one hand, but apparently stop. I can't. <laughs> it's because you're not usually typing when you're doing that, bro. No, it's mostly my <laughs> left hand. I'm using my right. That needs not to. Uh, he's not used to the full field of you know field of right. vision. You know, he's usually got VR goggles on or something. <laughs> Brewers. <laughs> That's the one there. Your mission mm. Padres, Brewers, Mar uh, Mariners, uh, the Rays, and the Rockies. Now, without That's looking team. that up, David, can you tell me the one team that remains in the major leagues that has never been to the World Series? You're scanning. I can no. see your eyes. No, no. I, I closed out of it. No, I can't because I don't watch baseball. Seattle, I just get Seattle like weird. Been, Seattle has never been to a World Series. No. Oh. They do have the um, major league <clears throat> record most wins in a regular season at 118. They did that in 2001, I think it is. I'm not mistaken. And they lost in the ALCS to the Yankees who eventually went on to lose the World Series in seven games to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So, Did he give you... Huh? Did he give you an ETA? No, he just said he's on his way home now. He said, if you've got to land it, I get it. So okay. I'm just going to send him a reply real quick. Um... If, big letters, if you were listening to us, like a, <laughs> you'd know we are waiting for him. Yeah. I'm kind of curious because the next game that's uh, next uh, big football game that we both, well, all of us are going to watch and enjoy is going to happen December 9th, the Army Navy game. Uh -huh. I wonder what the stand. I know Army's not doing. Oh, Navy's yeah. even worse, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, that game kind of transcends every, everything else. I mean, that is quite honestly. I mean, that's, that's the only game I actually watch. Literally, I mean, when they dub it America's game, it. I mean, that it's, dude. Yeah, I, I could not give two craps about football. I enjoy watching those games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> David, you're going to have to call Chris on three-way so he can get in. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't I don't know if I can do that one real quick. Maria's about to be made into a milkshake. It's just it's tragic. Okay, yeah, I can. Oh, she's on hold. And then you hit the little button that says merge. And you fix it up. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, 
boys and girls, angry faithful of all ages. We have party co-host Chris Jacka calling in live on the Bad Touch Bob hotline. How are you doing tonight, Chris? <laughs> I am doing fantastic. Uh, always good to be a part of the Bad Touch crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we just got done talking about your. Yeah, we, we just got done talking about your Rangers. So uh, we we were trying to hold off. I mean, I I know, and I, I do apologize because uh, I, I of course wanted to be there to revel in the glory that is a first franchise championship of all time. But uh, I'm sure you guys have done it. Uh, the the I completely lost the word I was looking for. The glory that it needed. The, the justice, you mean? No, yeah. Well, I mean, I attempted. I found it hard because, well, I mean, let's be honest. The only reason I'm remotely happy that the Red that the Rangers won is because Nathan Avaldi, who used to pitch for Boston, got himself another ring. So there you go. Listen, I'll take accolades wherever they come. Yeah. David played a jerker. Yeah, he, he he played the quote unquote tear jerking Rangers fans uh, commercial that played during the Cowboys Eagles game on on Sunday, and he's like, "You got to admit it was a okay. tear jerker." Like, well, so it, it may not have cried, but you can't tell me that you didn't have at least get killed watching that. No. Uh, you were both. Who of you have a heart at all? You just got it. It has to be the only explanation. No, okay. All right. All right. Here, 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 hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hear me out. Okay. The, the TV call, the TV call, I cared nothing for. Okay. What I usually do, because I, I, I subscribe to the ad app or to the at bad app, right? Um, for Major League Baseball. Right. It's the best $20 I spend every year. Okay, so I get to listen to radio or the radio broadcasts for every team with no blackouts, right? Um, what I usually try to do is tune in uh, to to that to that team's broadcast, um, especially when they're on the verge of winning. Um, like I got to listen to the the Cubs radio call when they won it all in 2016. I got to listen to uh, the the Astros uh, in 2017. Of course, Colin was celebrating, was watching the game with me in Game Six, 2018. Whenever we saw the Red Sox win it all against the Dodgers in six games, we got to listen to Joe Castiglione say, "The Boston Red Sox are the champions of of baseball." Can you believe it? You know, so I mean that I look forward to that call, right? Um, right. Li- listening to Eric Nadal call that gave me chills. Right, because that guy has been there through almost all of it. Um, I mean, he he was the guy that coined the term "Hello Win Column," "Hello World Series" in 2010, 2011, and then you just had to hear him just painstakingly just call that game in 2011 when Nelson Cruz missed the. Play that the was- all right, so. You know, having having lived through you know 1980 uh, 86 with Bill Buckner, I don't blame Bill Buckner at all. Um, having lived the 2003 ALCS when Aaron fucking Boone hit a home run off of, off of the uh, the late great Tim Wakefield in Game Seven of the 2003 ALCS to walk it off against the Red Sox. Um, you know. I, I know what it's like to experience heartache. I know what it's like to 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 feel like a Cub fan sometimes, where you're just like, "Well, next year is going to be our year." Uh, the right. Rangers, the Rangers, they they when they brought in Chris Young to the general manager's office, and they got rid of John Daniels, and he started rebuilding. I mean, he he's a good baseball guy. Um, you know, like I'm excited. Uh, the Red Sox fired Hayne Bloom, their general manager. They hired Craig Breslow, who pitched for the Red Sox in 2013 when we won the World Series. Um, he said, first and foremost, he is about pitching. He was a pitcher, so he's he's all about pitching. He's all about rebuilding the bullpen. Um, 
you know, uh, the, the hot commodities obviously this year are going to be uh, Shoei Otani and uh, uh, Yoshinobu uh, uh, Yamato. Uh, uh, yeah. Yoshi's coming out of the Japanese league. Um, and then obviously uh, with Otani being who Otani is, I mean, he's he's going to be the guy that everybody's chasing. Um, yeah. He, well, it's he, interesting you bring up on this. There was an article that I read that, that, that uh, basically the Rangers are kind of leading the pack on, on being able to sign him. Would you agree no, with that? No, I wouldn't. And <clears throat> I've, I've got a couple of different reasons why. But um, one, when you win a World Series – all right, general consensus and fear and common sense would dictate that everybody wants to come play for you because obviously you've shown what it takes to 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 go win a World Series. However, I would like to point out that we have not seen a repeat World Series winner since the 90s when the Toronto Blue Jays did it. So repeating a World Series champion is very hard to do. Um even though the, the the Houston Astros have made seven consecutive ALCS appearances, um, they've only been to three of the last seven World Series. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, no. They've they've been to four, four of the last World Series, uh, four of four of the last seven World Series. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they won in seventeen. They went back in nineteen. They lost to the Nationals. Um. And then they went um, 2021, and they lost to the Braves, and then they they won it all last year uh, against the Phillies. So, but one, one of the reasons why, I, you know, the, I'm not saying that the Rangers aren't going to be able to sign high-profile free agents. Um, it, it just depends on how much they're willing to spend, and then you could watch the ticket prices for their for club life escalate, like, exponentially. Yeah, and that's one of the blessings and also one of the curses that George Steinbrenner brought upon baseball when he bought the Yankees. He introduced free agency because it used to be if you traded a player that you know you had to buy their contract, right? Players didn't get to right. go out and and make teams bid for their services, right? Players didn't get to ask for the moon, right? Owners would trade contracts. They would have to buy contracts out. I mean, that was the only way up until George Steinbrenner came in and said, hey, look, here's what I want to do. I'm not saying that these guys don't deserve to go out and and make the money that they're that they're making. Because, um, I mean, their, their careers are, are defined by a finite period of time, right? They have only so many years of productivity before they kind of become irrelevant, right? Um, yeah, any right. sports team or any any but, sports uh, person, right? But here's the thing: the, with the more that you spend on free agents, the more should you spend. The more that you spend to get guys on your roster, okay? Where the NFL has a, sa- a salary cap, MLB has their own version of it. It's called the luxury tax. So if you go over a certain number, you have to pay a penalty, and that penalty, uh, if I remember correctly, the way that the penalty works is that. You pay that to MLB's front office, right? And it's not cheap. MLB's front office in turn takes that money and they distribute it among the smaller market teams to give them more cash to spend, right? So it's 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 kind of a redistribution of wealth um, uh, model. I like it, but at the same time, I still don't like the fact that we've got these 360, 380, 400 million, 450 million dollar contracts out there. Uh, you know, it's great to sign a guy for 10 years or whatever to make sure that he can stay within your organization. That you 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 know make sure that the the the, the contract is worded in such a way that the, the player can't opt out until a certain amount of years have expired. Jesus. Yeah. I was looking at the tax and the threshold for this year is two hundred thirty million dollars. Uh huh. Yeah. Jeez, uh, yeah. You are not. And yeah. some yeah. teams have to pay exactly. if they go over that. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. Just look at the figures. I mean, it, dude, it's astounding. And twenty twenty two was like five billion. That it. Yeah. Uh, it. Good lord. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, 
Shohei Otani, if you if you've seen the commercials, he's he just signed a brand new deal with New Balance. Okay. New Balance is corporate headquarters. They're located in Boston. And the early, early, early reports um, from people that were uh, sources close to Otani himself um, quoted him as saying that he is very interested and in, 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 in excited about exploring the prospect of playing in Boston. Now, obviously, we've got some other teams that come out and, you know, it, it – the thing about the hot stove is the you know hot stove season, <clears throat> which David and Maria, the hot stove season is basically the day after the World Series and to when the winter meetings fire up. Okay, the day that free agency starts, I mean, there are so many rumors just flying all over the place. It is a kinetic mess. Okay. Yeah. Now, whoever ends up signing Otani is going to pay for it. Um I don't I don't yeah. have any, I don't have any doubts that Otani's going to go out and earn his money. I mean, the guy is a producer and he is a freak athlete and he is dedicated to his craft. Okay. Um I don't look for him to pitch. Don't don't look for him to pitch uh for the first part of the 2024 season. Because he does, he did go get uh, Tommy John surgery. Now, the turnaround time of that is usually a season. Right. Um, now, the procedure has evolved enough to where the uh, the uh, recovery time has been cut in half almost. Um, you look at Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper had uh, Tommy John surgery uh, during the winter last year, and he only missed the first two months, first uh, three months of the season. No, actually, no. He only missed the first two months of the season. He wasn't supposed to come back this year at all. He wasn't even supposed to be a factor. Um, but he announced that he was feeling a lot faster than the doctors expected. And he came back even stronger. So he's out there cranking upper deck bombs. Oh, it's, it's not that big of a, a deal. I mean, he's making $5 million off the New Balance contract. But it's not like I understand that, but it's it's not so much the contract itself. It's about where that company is located. I I don't believe that stuff. Okay, yeah. okay. Look at look at Nike. Okay. The biggest world deal ever and changed mm -hmm. contract deals was and they made a movie about it, this deal. I Michael know, Jordan with, with uh Michael Jordan with uh Air Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Where's the company based out of? No, and I get that. I, I, it, don't, it, I don't. I don't. With see look, look, it's with it's the preliminary. The only time, only reason I read into that, the way that I did, is because of the preliminary reports from sources that were close to Otani and what they were reporting. I get that, but and, 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 and on, top all that, still, on, on top of all that, it 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 would make a world of sense. OK, he finally leaves the West Coast because Anaheim for the one World Series title that they own, the one. Yeah. OK, they are notoriously affiliated with wasting generational talent. This is true. Troy Otani. Yeah, you got Mike it, Trout on the same that. roster. On the same roster. And Mike Trout is not. He is never going to sniff. Even so much as a wild card play in game, as long as he's wearing an Angels uniform. But the, you're absolutely the right. right on that. Does not care about winning. The front office is concerned with nothing more than putting butts in the seats. And that's it because there is a prevailing, and it's an antiquated, but it's a prevailing thought process with ownership groups. In the major league, in, in the major leagues, and this dates all the way back to Connie Mack, whenever he owned and managed the Philadelphia A's. Okay, and you're you're not wrong. Sometimes right. they actually just they put a shit ton of money in front of players so they can keep them away from good teams. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I've I've actually looked. Yeah, at I, I get that, but but as far as specifically as it relates to baseball, the, the he, Connie Mack was quoted. He said. 
you know, I want our guys to be just good enough to want to stay. Because if they play and they win, you win championships, guess what? When that player's contract comes up for renegotiation, you are going to spend more money to keep them there. If your team goes further into the playoffs and plays into the World Series and like this, you know, like this World Series did, like this ALCS did, it goes like with the, with both championship series game uh, champ championship series, right? It both went seven games. World Series went five games. Okay. You have to pay a player for each of those games. Yeah. Whether they stepped on the field or not, they were in uniform in the dugout. You have to pay them. You got to pay the staff. You got to pay the concessioners. You got to pay for the pay for the venue. You have to spend an inordinate amount of money the further you go in the playoffs. While it's great, you bring home the championship. Awesome. The people out in Anaheim are not concerned with winning anything close to a wild card spot, a division title, let alone a world championship. They did that once back in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Once. And they did that against the San Francisco Giants. Okay. It... It, 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 yeah, but your ticket sales for the full season are also exponentially higher than they are regular season. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but the, here, here's the thing. I mean, you're still now. Anaheim, Anaheim is by virtue of the fact that they are in Los Angeles, and they just happen to share the city with the Dodgers. They're still by 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 Major League Baseball standards, they are considered a large market team. Uh, the Rangers are considered a small market team, believe it or not. But they went out and spent like a big market team. And and the results, you know, finally panned themselves out after, you know, coming off of what was it like a, a 100 and, 101, you know, lost season last year or the year oh, before. Two, yeah, 103, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was 100 plus losses. Yeah, because I remember Corey Seager's first year in in Texas was not kind to him at all, and everybody's looking at it like we paid this much for this guy, and where he we got him for another two years. Well, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you stick around, yeah. and you believe, and you buy into a system. But Mike Trout needs to get out of Anaheim, pure, plain, and simple, hands down. He's a Philadelphia guy. Um, he's a big Eagles fan. He's from New Jersey, but he's a big Philadelphia sports fan. I he, he, honestly, I think I think Mike Trout needs to get out of Anaheim. I wouldn't mind seeing him in a Phillies uniform, and I hate Philadelphia. Well, yeah, do you think it's? Do you think he still has time? I, I think maybe Mike Trout at best maybe has another two years right. left in him. Yeah, I honestly don't think he's going to end up with a championship, even if he changes teams. I think his his championship window has, has passed. Well, here's the thing. All right, so playing devil's advocate. All right, so we're looking at Mike Trout leaving Anaheim in the rearview mirror, and he's going to a place where it's going to give him his best opportunity to even get to the playoffs. Okay. Um, with with Mike Trout being a perennial center center fielder, okay, places like Boston. I'm not even going to mention New York because. Screw the Yankees. All right. Places like Philadelphia, places like Texas are, or, uh, you know, even places like St. Louis. Okay. Um, you know, it's, or, or God forbid, God forbid that, you know, Mike Trout say comes to Houston. Okay. <laughs> we're living in bizarro world, right? We're, we're we're kind of dipping into bizarro world here, and you know I've got Doctor Strange behind me opening up the portals and everything like that, so we can see into the multiverse. All right, with Mike Trout being on what is most most um, in most people's opinions to be the twilight of his career, he is on the backside of his career. Yes, carrying a team on his back; those days are past. But when you go to these other large market teams, 
who actually have a roster that can play around you, you've got the option to be platooned. You know, there are that a lot of teams made uh, made heavy, heavy tra- foot traffic in, in, in deep into a playoff run, platooning positions, shortstop, third base, second base. They, you know, and it's not uncommon for, um, you know, for, for, for teams to platoon their outfielders. So, you know, is it, is it impossible for Mike Trout to win a world series? No, it's not. But as long as he is wearing an Anaheim angels uniform, he'll never see that. Not a day. Yeah. I agree with that. I do agree with that. You know, well, I'm looking. I'm looking. And, and it would kind of like so, like in racing terms, it would be like sitting there and watching Mark Martin, arguably one of the best best drivers to ever strap it in, strap it on. Right? He he never won a championship. He never won a Daytona 500. But he's still in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Mike Trout, will, Mike Trout inevitably will end up in Cooperstown. But the trick is, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, but. It, Whose hat is he going to be wearing? Because if it's an Anaheim hat, that is going to be one of the more tragic stories in the history of baseball. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, yeah. Mike, yeah. Trout, Mike Trout not winning the World Series or winning a World Series title would be right up there with the inexplicable mysteries of the game, like Nolan Ryan with seven no hitters never winning a Cy Young. I literally was going to say that. Like, that's that's on par with with Nolan Ryan not having a – which it just – yeah. Mm-hmm. You hate to see it, but that's uh, – that's, it. that's that's baseball. That's just kind of the way that the – Yeah, I mean, people are going to be like, well, baseball do what baseball do, but – you know, I, I'm I'm what when I'm what I'm really just kind of I'm interested to see is who steps up. I mean, who who's going to be the you know? I mean, you're going to see people coming and going, teams coming and going. Who are the fate? You know, who's going to show up early, and who's going to fade? Now, MLB.com has got um, <clears throat> the number one <clears throat> number one player to watch in the free agency is not Shohei Otani, according to them. It's Blake Schnell coming out of uh, San Diego. He's a left-handed pitcher. Dude is an absolute stud. Um, uh, okay, I get it, but how is it? How is Otani not the, the the cream of the crop right now? Well, he's he's going to be your sweepstakes guy, right? Well, it he's might gonna be. The- be the, he's going to be the guy that everybody throws money at, but only one team's going to seriously be considered a contender to land him. And nobody knows what that is. Nobody knows who that is right now. So, and the fact that you got sound, you sound so much better tells me that you're home now. Yeah. I am walking in the door right now. I just got to plug the computer in and jump in. Well, okay. Let me, let me uh, catch up on uh, some stuff. I'm looking because when you said how much they spend for, the Rangers, and this is going back from like 2020. Uh, they uh, spent the 1.2 billion on Globe Life Field uh, for the opening. 700 million dollars was just for the team. Mm-hmm. Picking, they spent 185 million uh, for the pitcher uh, Jacob uh, Degrom. Degrom, yeah, DeGrom. And he didn't even make the postseason roster because he blew his arm out this year. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at how much they spent this yeah, year. And that's another thing, too. And it's like you, you spend all this money on these guys, right? And then just like, boom, at the drop of a hat for no inexplicable reason, they they pop an Achilles or they blow an ulnar tendon in their arm and they got to, you know, they got to miss the whole season because why they had to go get Tommy John surgery. And, you know, or, or they have some non-baseball related injury and now you're out this money for that year. And, and, and I'm just like, why? You know, I, all it's really doing is driving up ticket prices. I mean, for the love of God, dude, it, it, you were looking at. Um, you're basically buying a Lamborghini, but you're still parking in your garage. Well, 
that that that's my that's, that's my, my, my argument against high high those those like nine ten twelve figure contracts is the fact that everyday people like you and I have to scrimp and save to go to a single game. Exactly. And you know, I mean, do ticket prices for the World Series at Globe Life Field started at seven hundred dollars? Started. Yeah. The closer that you got down to the field, do you're already looking at spending over six thousand dollars just for well, one it, week? It's like going up to the Super Bowl. Well, we, we we checked it out one year. We were just you know, well, shot yeah. I mean, I get that. Yeah, but that I mean that's the Super Bowl. That's one game. You've got the entire world watching that event. But you've got, and I'll bring him in here. Um, there we go. All right. So, you know, we we've got all these. You know, we've we've got these people that that are season ticket holders and they get first access to postseason games, right? But yeah. they're still paying a premium price for those tickets. And then outside, you got the vendors who are like, at prices for things like parking. You know, so oh, yeah. you're paying 100 plus for, for parking anymore. Right. Now, and so the fact that Major League Baseball, what, here's the unwritten rule. Well, it's not the unwritten rule. It's, it's, the, it's the very widely publicized rule is that once the postseason starts, the teams no longer set ticket prices. All those ticket prices are set by the front office of Major League Baseball. And with, you know, I don't agree with the fact that we, as as working blue-collar guys, we cannot just go drop $700 on a one ticket. You know, I like I would love to take Colin to a World Series game. But unless I hit the lottery or I save for two years. Yeah, you're talking two grand plus. Two grand plus. And and dude, that's just the bare bones budget. We're not, I mean, we're it's already speed. I mean, we're not talking about we're talking about just game tickets. We're not talking about hotels. We're not talking about airfare. We're not talking about eating, transportation to and from the ballpark. You know, it it. Okay, so Texas Live, they've got one of those Lowe's hotels that is it's attached to the ballpark. Oh yeah. During the regular season, one night, seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yep. Jeez. And you better tell you, you better book a room early too, because it mm -hmm. sells out immediately. I mean, look yeah. at the uh the bar. I mean, uh, we've we've all seen the bar scene after the Rangers won uh won the World Series. Yeah, and I um and that's a beautiful. We went to, I took her to. I, I went. I, I took Mindy to her first Red Sox game when they were playing in Arlington last year. Yeah, and uh, Colin was there with his brother and his mom and mom had taken him and his brother to a game, and we were texting each other the whole game. <laughs> right? And we ended up meeting out in the plaza just right there in front of Texas Live. And um, but yeah, I mean, Mindy and I stayed uh, stayed the night there at the the Lowe's Hotel. Texas Live, seven hundred and fifty dollars one night. Yeah, that's that's just one, right, one night. night. And this is me well, as, you're a, as a convenient diehard Rangers fan. I, I I could not justify spending that much. To well, be see, honest. I was looking for and, hotels. Yeah, um, I, I've been to that. Texas and, Live, yeah, like well, in the off season, I've been there in the Texas Live, and it's gorgeous, beautiful. I love going in there. Yeah, and being there, and, but, you know. It, it's great when whenever Boston was in town because like all the Boston fans just swarm like they take over the bar and dude Red Sox fans New Englanders in particular love to spend money on on other people drinking yeah <laughs> you know? other people drinking <laughs> you know I'm other like, people <laughs> you know it's like you know back up there in the northeast you know we don't like drinking alone because if you drink alone then that's when you got a problem you got to start going to meetings or whatever so right. you know i mean they 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 spend the money you know <laughs> it's like going up to benford maine and having a keg off in the woods until somebody yells look it's the police run you know exactly <laughs> you know it's it, it, it the pricing around the game 
is ridiculous. Um, and it, and it's and it's every level of the game, all the way down to like twelve U, fourteen, thirteen U, fourteen U, the travel teams, uh, even to an extent, some school programs. It's like you know, nobody has five hundred dollars to go drop on a bat. No, you know, nobody has two hundred dollars to go drop on the latest pair of spikes. You know, and Colin was playing with a with an axe bat. Uh, are you? I think you still playing with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bought him an axe bat like three three years ago, and um, it was like a three three hundred dollar bat, and it was the previous year model. So I got it on clearance. I paid one hundred and twenty dollars for it. You know, so it, it it's it's ridiculous. Right. You know, that the money, the type of money that's being pushed out for these bats and, and, you know, just for the equipment alone, um, you know, like you've got, I've got a, I've got a pro pro 40, uh, 44 pro glove, custom glove that I bought for myself. I splurged on myself. I had the money at the time and I was like, I really want one of these gloves and it, you can completely customize it. Color scheme. You can have it embroidered the whole nine yards. Um, I spent $225 to include shipping on this glove. Beautiful glove. I've had it for two, three years now. Okay. Um, starting out just the pro model glove um, for like Rawlings, uh, Wilson, uh, Mizunu, uh, Nakona, you're starting out at like three and $400 before you get into customization. That was the one you showed me, correct? Uh, yeah, the red, white, and blue glove. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gorgeous, yeah. absolutely beautiful glove. Um, you know, so I, I'm like, man, you know, just you know, and I take care of that glove because it. I mean, I've got it sitting up in the top of the closet uh, in a in a glove caddy, uh, a glove caddy, so it like re- retains its shape. Um, you know, I bought, I bought, uh, I found Colin a, a really nice glove. Uh, dude, I've seriously got to get you one of those 44 gloves, man. I really do. Uh, I would show my glove, but it's in my locker. It's cool. So. Is it still the black and red one that I bought you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I went out and I, I, I made, like I built, uh, when I gave it to him initially, I like handmade a glove bag for it with the, you know, the, the shell inside. So that way it could retain its shape. I have that. I got custom embroidered. Um, now I went and I got him one of those lizard skin uh, glove caddies. And I cut the embroidery off of the bag and I, I glued it. Yeah, here it is right there. Oh. So, yeah, because nice. I mean, my nickname for him is Spud, so I call him Spud all the time. But, uh, yeah, I got you know, way. it's, you know, I, I, I the, the look on his face when he opened up that glove, like he wanted to go out that morning and, and play catch with me. You know, he's like, oh, I want to go play catch with him. I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, so, but, you know, it, it just the fact that baseball has become so incredibly. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Tell me you did not pull an Elon Musk and put that on backwards. It sure looked no. like. No, I didn't. Look, mm-hmm. see? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. A tag in the back there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Must have like the angle, the camera angle, or something. I got to reshape that hat for him. <laughs> no, no, that's um, that's Tra- that was that's Chauncey's hat that you left. Oh, was it? Okay. Yep. So, like, still got to reshape it for you. Off the rack. The anyways, um, I irritate like whenever I go buy a new cowboy hat, like I irritate the people at the hat store at the at the Western Wear store because I'm like, hey, can you fire up your steamer? I'm like, why? Our hat person's not here. I, I, I know. I, I, I shape my own hats. And they're like, well, if you burn yourself, we're not responsible. I'm like, I, I get that. Just just turn the damn thing on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, But, I mean, with baseball, just, just being so incredibly overpriced, um, you know, it's it's ridiculous. You know, it, like uh, the, the last Red Sox uh, Astros game that I went to when the <laughs> – when the Red Sox embarrassed the Astros like seventeen to one or something like that, um, I mean it was a blowout, dude. I mean I got those tickets on Vet Ticks. You know, oh, wow. so I, I just I got lucky. You know, it, it was actually the only game that I had gotten to go to all year long because I'm like I'm sitting there going, 
we haven't been to a ball game all year. I'm sitting there talking to my wife about it. And I'm like, I have not seen the Red Sox play. And I'm like, I was actually kind of mad because like, I try to make it a tradition where I get to go see the Red Sox play at least once every year. Yeah. And, and then, you know, I get the notification from, uh, from a friend of mine, um, uh, uh, friend of mine named Billy. He, he, he was like, Hey, check out bet text. And I was like, all right, cool. So I checked it out and I was like, Ooh, so I, I got, a, when I walked over to my wife, I was like, Hey, check this out. She's like, Hey, yeah. So I was like, you think, you think Misty wants to go? She's like, no, oh, let's go ask her. And so she's like, like, yes, please. <laughs> so of course they wore their Altuve jerseys and I'm like, all right, all right, that's cool. It's whatever. I'm sporting my, my socks gear. So yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, the, the seats emptied out quick, right? So after the third inning, you can kind of move around and find a different seat if you don't like where you're sitting. Yeah. <laughs> Before the end, by the end of by the end of the ninth inning, dude, I had made my way down to the field level, like right there in the the, the corner in left field. Oh man. Yeah, right down there in that corner by the foul pole. Right, and I looked at the usher All the way like, down, like down to the rail. Down to the rail. I, I looked at the usher. I was like, are you going to bust my balls over three outs, man? I mean, he's like, just, yeah, dude, just go. I don't care. And he wouldn't <laughs> walk away. But my pay grade. <laughs> I, I mean, just, it's not like they're going to be coming back to their seat. Like, come on. It, yeah. It was I mean, down to. <laughs> we did. We did. We did manage to, to for like an inning and a half. We we got to watch, uh, watch the game from uh, the Crawford boxes, which those are nice seats, by the way. Oh, yeah. So, um, I don't necessarily think that I would pay money to sit there on a regular basis. That's like a treat kind of a deal, but for the most part, like, yeah, I have, nah. but, um, you know, baseball has just gotten way overpriced, you know, and, and I get the whole, well, inflation, blah, blah, blah. The players yeah. gotta make their money the owners got to make their money. I get all that, but. I mean, look at look at uh banana I mean, becoming like the 1950s and 1960s whenever airline travel first started to be a thing, and only the rich could afford to do it, and everybody showed up wearing suits and ties, you know. It was an experience. I kinda like I kind of miss those days because I've seen people on those freaking planes sometimes. Look, that motherfucker there was is just he was not real. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna fly. You're gonna fly. It's it's be comfortable within reason some yeah, people I mean, that be comfortable just you're gonna fly be comfortable but don't be walmart comfortable <laughs> yes we're not at a wall be target comfortable at least yeah, yeah. at yeah. least target comfortable. Yeah. no because you still have to be you know somewhat presentable when you're in target like how about, you how about this? You in the middle not target comfortable you are academy comfortable okay yes okay be okay yeah, I buy Be that. Bass Pro Shops comfortable. There you go. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's high class right there. Yeah, that's see, that's you're speaking my. You don't want to go Cabela's because that's that's rich people. Yeah, I mean because they kind of frown upon things like tactical gear on an aircraft. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the closest that I get to doing that. I, yeah, I like to I like to fly in my five elevens. I I really do. I mean, because they're just a comfortable pair of pants. Right. You know, so it's not like I'm showing up in 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 the uh, the 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 uh, the the mil spec uh, popper combat pants with the knee pads on them. You know, yeah. with the the fire resistance. Yeah. It's not like we're doing that, but you know. Why did you call those? I carried up. <laughs> they're all combat <laughs> pants, right? So they're they're fire resistant. They've got knee pads in them. Um, they they stretch in all the right places. That and is not what you said. Oh, and oh, Andrea Andrea. is in the. Oh, look at her. She showed up. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, and uh, BC. She. Oh, and BC. Oh, look. They're slumming it up, dude. They must be in between be. takes. That's what it is. It might be. It might also be the fact that uh, BC dressed up like uh, uh, Buffalo Bill for Halloween. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? I don't regularly go for blondes. I'm usually a redhead guy, but you know, BC, you're not half bad. I kind of gonna want to go for that. See if Andre didn't show up as as um um little Annie Oakley. 
they missed an opportunity there. I oh yeah, that is true. She could have dressed up like Annie Oakley. Uh, wow, man, I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, David, you wouldn't have it any other way, information, dude. dude. Send them a link. Send one of them a link. Bring them in, dude. Oh, there you go. I mean, yeah, yeah, bring them in. The more the merrier. Our, our, our... <laughs> oh, who's the chick in the well? Put lotion on it. <laughs> tell me you put lotion on it. Oh, tell me you put lotion on it. Do, do, where you care? Oh, again, hold on. I'm, I'm. Hey, Andrea, I'm sending it to your uh, Instagram account. Chicken in the well. Are you talking about the the one from the ring? Lambs. That's that's. Yeah. Oh, from oh, oh, no. they go, oh, they're they're put. They're post coitus. That's what it is. Oh. Oh, they can't fly right now. Okay, that's all right. Brown chicken, brown cow. What's up? <laughs> I just take no. Just keep that you, up to your chin. I did a, I did an episode of the real Buffalo Bill because I found the uh, the guy that actually sent uh was in his prison cell. Mm -hmm. I went over the whole thing. He wouldn't stop stop uh uh talking about how he treated those girls and everything. It was just right. Horrible. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you you missed it. Like when the show started, Chris is trying to do his weird sport, all right? And I was like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do, do you hear that?" And then I was like, "Wait a minute." Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, "By the way, David." And then, and then he's like, "Who who, who won that game, David?" He, he goes, "Really? Really? Really?" He goes, "Really?" And I was like, "Wait, hold on, hold on." I'm still upset about that. They were five and uh, okay. What what okay. happened? I don't know what 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 I'm <laughs> lost. What happened? Was five and zero oh for the uh, beginning of the season, and what? as soon as Army shows up, they lose twenty four to three. Oh my goodness! You uh, mean uh, really? Is that is that Army? You know, I also thought. You know, uh, I can't remember who it was, Chris, that told us this, but it was like. Um, the, the any any time that Army is playing Air Force and they're in Colorado Springs to play that game, mm -hmm. the Air Force Academy f does flyovers car uh, fly uh, does flyovers uh, over Carson all week long. <laughs> they 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 hey, snap. I they was snap. Army snapped Air Force's thirteen game winning streak that dated back to last season, and. It was the first win against a ranked team in like X amount of years for the for for Army. Um, I just want to say that I was stationed at Carson, and oh, speaking you on behalf of the Army, oh, yeah. speaking on behalf of the Army, the jokes on Air Force because we fucking love that shit. <laughs> we, love, we love that shit. So <laughs> jokes on y'all. The part that David just really couldn't stand was like I sat there and. <laughs> And I started talking about the game through the sorry, music. We only allow the winner songs here, sir. We allow winner songs. We don't allow loser songs. Right. Singing second. That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> and see, BC knows what's up, right? Because, you know... <clears throat> He was a he was a rock -us on. There you go. It okay. So Chris, to give you kind of some perspective here. Uh huh. All right. BC and I were both in the hundred first at the same time. Coincidentally enough, we found that out. Um, <laughs> the other battalions, the other brigades, the other regiments, the other units, just in general, that are assigned to the hundred first, we can have civilized conversations about the, the esprit, de, you know, esprit de corps, the history, the camaraderie, yeah. just everything that just is good and right with the hundred and first. Then you get the rock Hassans that forget to put their helmets on when they leave the, the, the assisted care living center, <laughs> come running in. Timmy! And they're like, <laughs> it's, it's like Timmy, but they're like, rock is on. Ah! <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they, they give you that, that look like it's a cross between Debo and, and, and a kid with downs. They're like, <laughs> there you go, guys. open the door, <laughs> open the door. That's <laughs> <laughs> Debo with down syndrome. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who else wants to tell me to rock a song? <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh my god, that's so perfect. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> DC, nothing but love for you, man. <laughs> nothing, nothing but love for your brother. Oh my god. Oh. Amazingly accurate. <laughs> It's like I'm sure that the fourth ID had their had their had their uh, special yeah. needs unit. You know? <laughs> it was one twelve. <112. laughs> <laughs> the mortar platoon. <laughs> right. BC says he misses that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's that's the end of the show, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell if that's David oh, acquiescing no. defeat or if he's just tired of, of being <laughs> being turned out. <laughs> yeah, it's the turnout thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, yeah, man. I, I think I think Chris deserves to hear the joke of the week. Oh okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Lay it on me, brother. Lay it on me. So, uh, Stephen Hawking marks in a bar. Oh, wait. I'm just going to say. <laughs> he walked? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so BC completely oh, missed that. that. <laughs> oh. Okay, so David, before we land this plane, I have got okay. to do my best uh, to recreate the performance here. <laughs> was talking about <laughs> was talking about how every other unit at the hunter and first we can have a very civilized conversation with our pinkies out you know about the you know the history and, and just the greatness of our division and and and, and then here comes the rockasons like the special needs kids who forgot their helmets when they left the assisted living center going yeah, the Rocky Sons, you know, and it, it's you know, they they all come and come, come across like either sloth from the Goonies had children uh, with an equally uh, atrocious looking woman, or Debo has you know Down syndrome, where he's like, who else wants somebody to rock his on? Who on? Yo, <laughs> cut with latrine. Yes, he is. He's like, rock is on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and then I, 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 unknowing, not knowing that you weren't there, you know, because in true Rockets on fashion, you spent a lot of time in, your, in the motor pool, I'm sure, but, um, <laughs> and there can be help you. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like there could be only one one driver per truck going to the third shop what are you talking about <laughs> so, easy big guy <laughs> like, that's a little personal <laughs> that's a personal question Dan and I'll invite you to stay out of my private life here guy uh <laughs> I know this Finkel and Finkel was a rockus on. Oh, I ain't scared, man. Remember, I told you I was no slack, bro. So bring it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and land this player before we. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can land it. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. This is Nerd Sports 133. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And I am Chris Jacka. Colin Skelton. Thank you all. Goodbye. Later. Bye.